what's up Cedar Grove Christian Church? Pastor Rob here this morning. I hope that you are having a fantastic day. As we get started with our God's Word for You Today series, I want to begin by offering an apology. One of the videos for last week only managed to load to YouTube, hence the reason why the links were shared. Going forward with this week, those issues have been resolved, so you should see them load to Facebook as well as YouTube. As we get started, though, we're going to be doing a series through the book of Romans, perhaps one of the most theologically heavy books in the entire New Testament. But given the state of events that are taking place in our world, given the reality of what is taking place within the churches of Christ in America, across denominational lines, I think it's a very important book for us to study. And so we're going to begin a study through the book of Romans. I'm not sure how long it's going to take. I'm not sure how uh, well these videos will do. There will be some things that I say that perhaps you disagree with. For those of you who are not members of Cedar Grove Christian Church, but perhaps maybe have stumbled across these videos because someone shared them on Facebook or someone shared them on YouTube, I hope that you will be able to have questions answered. And perhaps if you do have questions about what it means to be a Christian or about what it means to be a follower of Jesus Christ, please do not hesitate <coughs> excuse me, to reach out and contact us here at Cedar Grove Christian Church. We would love to be an assistance to you as you begin your walk with Jesus Christ. With that said, though, we're going to pick up in Romans chapter 1 this morning as we start our series. And we will do the first 17 verses. However, our emphasis is going to be on verses 16 and 17 this morning. So if you have your Bible handy, I would invite you to join with me in Romans chapter 1, verses 1 through 17. If not, please pause the video, go grab your Bible, and come back. Let me remind you that as a church, we believe that God's Word is inspired, inerrant, and authoritative for life. So Romans chapter 1, starting at verse 1. Paul, a servant of Christ Jesus, called as an apostle and set apart for the gospel of God, which he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, concerning his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who was a descendant of David according to the flesh, and was appointed to the pow be the powerful Son of God according to the Spirit of holiness by the resurrection of the dead. Through him we have received grace and apostleship to bring about the obedience of faith for the sake of his name among all Gentiles, including you who are also called by Jesus Christ. To all who are in Rome, loved by God, called the saints, grace to you and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for all of you because the news of your faith is being reported in all the world. God is my witness whom I serve with my spirit in telling the good news about his Son, that I constantly mention you, always asking in my prayers that if it is somehow in God's will, I may now at last succeed in coming to you. For I want very much to see you, so that I may impart to you some spiritual gift to strengthen you. That is, to be mutually encouraged by each other's faith, both yours and mine. Now I don't want to be, you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, that I often plan to come to you, but was prevented until now, in order that I might have a fruitful ministry among you, just as I have had among the rest of the Gentiles. I am obligated both to the Greeks and barbarians, both to the wise and foolish, so I am eager to preach the gospel to you also who are in Rome. For I am not ashamed of the gospel, because it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, first to the Jew and also to the Greek. For in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, just as it is written, the righteous will live by faith. So as Paul begins his letter to the church in Rome, he wants them to know that he is thankful for the faith in which they've exhibited that he has heard about. But there's some deep theological truth, even in this introduction to the letter, that I believe as a body of believers and as Christians in general, we need to rally behind and we need to hold dear. The first thing that Paul mentions, if you look back at the beginning of chapter 1, he says that this gospel of God, the gospel of Jesus Christ, was preached, promised, beforehand through the prophets. One of the earliest attacks on the Christian faith was that the Old Testament prophets and the Old Testament history did not build up to the person and work of Jesus Christ. However, in Christ we have the fulfillment of all of the messianic uh, prophecies that exist in the Old Testament. And it's very important for us as Christians to make sure that we hold on to both the Old, and the new co both the old Covenant and the New Covenant in so much as we hold on to the complete scripture, 
Genesis through Revelation. It is very important that as we go to proclaim Christ as Christians, that we are able to show the entire story from the beginning and the fall to the incarnation of Christ to the judgment that is coming. We cannot water down the gospel to be effective. We cannot water down the gospel so that we might not offend somebody. No, we must be full of the gospel. We must preach the full gospel. And as Paul says in verse 16, we cannot be ashamed of the gospel. This same gospel, that there is salvation in Jesus Christ, that Jesus Christ is the Messiah, the one who is coming to save us from our sins, has been preached, church, since the prophets. In fact, the first messianic prophecy is found in Genesis chapter 3, at the fall, where God tells the serpent that he will strike the heel of the woman's descendant, but the woman's descendant will crush his head. That right there is the first messianic prophecy. So ever since the fall, God has had a plan in motion to redeem us. God has had a plan in motion to save us. We are not capable of saving ourselves, as we've attested to many times, but God has instilled a plan, and that is faith in Jesus Christ, the reception of grace that is offered on the cross of Christ to all who believe. Paul goes on to continue that he received grace through the apostleship. That God set him aside for a specific purpose to go to the Gentiles. If it were not for the ministry of the Apostle Paul, there's a good chance that you and I wouldn't even be having this conversation this morning. But the Apostle Paul was called by God on the road to Damascus to be the Apostle to the Gentiles. He goes on to say that though he desires to see them, it hasn't happened yet, but he hopes that it will. He lays out his heart that he wants to see them, he wants to preach the gospel to them, because he wants them to understand that the gospel message is for everyone. The gospel message that you and I have been blessed with is ours to give, ours to share, because everyone needs a Savior. Everyone needs salvation through Jesus Christ. And perhaps one of the most interesting aspects of this passage comes in verses 16 through 17. After Paul establishes the fact that he is called by God to preach to the Gentiles, both to the Greeks, so the sophisticated Gentiles, and to the barbarians, those of lesser standards. Both to the wise, those who are academically sound, those who are philosophical, and to those who are foolish, the blue-collar workers, you know, those kind of people, the people that may not have a grasp of understanding. Paul's point, before he gets to verse 16, is that his mission, your mission, my mission, is to preach the gospel to everyone. We cannot dictate who will receive it or who will not receive it. That choice has been given to them. But the offer of salvation, the offer of grace through the person and work of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, is open to everyone. And so Paul says in verse 16, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ, the hope found in the scriptures, he says, I am not ashamed of it because it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes. It is very important that as we go about our faith, our life, that we are not ashamed of the gospel. We must preach the truth of the grace of Jesus Christ. Because it is the power of God for salvation. It is open to everyone who believes. Church, that's all I have for you. God bless. We'll see you back here on Friday.